Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my videos. So I know I haven't uploaded in a while, and that's actually because I'm working on this for you guys. And what this is, as you can see, it's a fully 3D and networked turn-based chess game. And I've been getting requests to make a turn-based tutorial. And so I figured I would, and I've also had requests to make a chess game. So I figured I'd kind of combine them into two and make a turn-based chess game tutorial for you guys. And that originally was the plan, to make a full tutorial series on this. But once I started doing it, it took me about three weeks to get this working uh, and totally finished. So I realized the tutorial on this would not be realistic at all because it would take way too long and nobody would be able to follow it because it would just be way too long. Um, and I'd probably mess up. So instead, what I've decided to do is give you guys a full download to this project. You can download it, use it for your game, modify it however you want, no strings attached. And then in this video, I'll be walking you through like how the project's organized, you know, how the code works, because I really want to focus on the turn-based networking portion of it, not so much chess, because I know that a lot of people out there are really looking for how do I make a turn-based game, so I want to focus on that more. Um, the chess is just kind of like icing on the cake. If you guys want to make a chess game, then here you go. This is 80% of the way of what you need to do that. So just to really quickly show you how it works, um, either player can rotate around and look at the board whenever they want. And at the top of the screen, it shows you what color you are. So you can see on the left, it says that you're white. And on the right, it says that you're black. And it also shows whose turn it is. So you can just click and move pieces however you want, um, as long as they are a valid move. So if you try to make a move that's not valid, so if I try to take my queen and move it down here, or really anywhere out here, it won't let me because it this pawn is blocking it. Um, but it has like all this logic, like the knights know how to jump, um, and they'll only jump like you can't jump over here or over here. You have to actually jump legally. Um, pawns know how to work as well. Like I can attack diagonally with a pawn, but I can't normally move diagonally. So all that logic is hooked up um, and inside of inside of this project. The only thing that isn't um, hooked up is the logic for checking, like, you know, check and checkmate. But if you guys are making a chess game, this is probably like 80% of the, what you would need to do it. If you want to add in checking, then you could do that you know, yourself on top of this project. But again, I just wanted to kind of focus on the networked side of it and how you would make a turn-based game. So yeah, so let's go ahead and look at the actual code. So a lot of the, um, well, I guess, so the, so the game really starts inside of the game mode. So if you look at the game mode class um, inside of here, we have this really important event called event on post login. And this gets called whenever a new um, player connects to the game and is assigned a player controller. So you can see inside of here, we're basically checking that if the number of players is equal to, then we're going to actually go ahead and start the game because we don't want to start the game if there's only one player. And in fact, if you run it without setting this to two, so if I have this set down to one and I run it, you'll see the game never actually starts. The HUD never shows up. I can't click anything um, because there's no other player connected yet. So it only starts once there are two players in the game, which is what this is doing. And then this delay is here just so that the player has time to fully be connected before we start sending him messages. But once we have two players connected, the first thing we do, um, and this is really important, we tell the we tell both of the clients, so you can see um, these two boxes right here, we're telling both of the clients what player they are. So we're saying, get me player zero and tell him that he is player zero. Get me player one and tell tell him that he is player one. And it's really important to know that this event on post login only runs on the server. And it only runs on the server because the game mode itself, which is where this event is, only actually exists on the server. So there's no way this can run on the client. This is all running on the server. So the server is telling the clients individually, hey, you're player one and you're player two, essentially, right? And the way he's doing that is with this set player index function or event rather. And if you look at this, um, it's a client event. And what a client event is, is an event that gets sent from the server to the client. It doesn't get sent to all the clients, it only gets sent to the client that you're specifying. So you can see right here, we're specifying player zero and player one. So if we look at this set player index client event, if we actually go to it, you can see it is inside of the player controller. And if you look at the event and you look over here on the right, you can see, I have it set to run on owning client and I have it set to reliable because we, you know, we need this to succeed. We, the game will totally break if this fails. So 
it's set to reliable. And all that's doing inside of here is it's taking the player index, which is zero for player one and one for player two, and it's saving that. So you can see I just have a little private variable here for what the player index is. And then it's creating the HUD at that point, which is why the HUD doesn't show up until there's two players, because it doesn't actually create it until there's two players, and it adds it to the viewport. But the most important thing it's doing here is that it's saying it's it's saving what um, what index the player is, because the player needs to know if it's black or white, and the server needs to be the one that tells it that. So going back to the game mode, once both the players know what color they are, essentially, it then calls this begin player turn for player zero. And what that's saying is, you know, both of you guys have, both of you guys know which player you are, now begin player zero's turn. And you'll notice this one is a multicast event instead of a client only event because it needs to get sent out to everybody because both of the players in the game need to know whose turn it is. If you only tell the white player that it's his turn, the black player is not going to know for sure like what's really going on. He's just going to be kind of left in the dark. So you need to tell him as well that, hey, it's player zero's turn so that the player, the black player knows, okay, I need to sit and wait. So you can see this is a multi-cast event. So we go ahead and look at this. Um, it is inside the chess game state. And what this does is inside the game state, it sets the active player index so that we can easily reference it later if we want to know like whose turn is it. Um, and then it calls the on active player set event. Um, and if we look at this, um, let's find where this is being called. So on active player set. Uh, so inside of the player controller, we, in the begin play, we bind to this on active player set event and we bind it to handle player or handle active player set. So if we go ahead and look at that, handle active player set, inside of here is where the real magic happens. So again, this event is getting sent out to everybody or both the players, there's really only two players. It's getting sent out to both the players and it it's past the active player index. And so all this is doing is saying, hey, is the current player index my player index? And if it is, then it sets the player state to selecting piece, meaning that you know, the current state of the player is that it's on him now to select his piece. Otherwise, we set it to waiting for opponent because it's not our turn. So we're just waiting on the opponent. And so that's how the game kind of starts. And then as soon as the player realizes that it's his turn, his logic will take over. So if we go and look at the player controller, and if we go inside of the event graph inside of here. If we look at event tick, um, there's a little bit of logic in here just for centering the mouse whenever you're rotating the camera. Um, that's not that important for networking. But the main important thing that happens is this function right here. So we're doing a switch statement on the current player state. And you can see these are all the different player states. So the player can either be waiting on his opponent. He can be selecting a piece. He can be selecting a destination to move that piece, or his turn can be finished. And we're saying, hey, if you are selecting a piece or you're selecting a destination, then go ahead and run this tick hovered tile event. And what this does is it updates the current hover state of the tile. Um, you guys can go in and kind of look at this better, but it's just doing some line traces inside of here to figure out like, hey, where are you hovering? And it's just drawing that little yellow um, square that you see. Oops, let me put it back to two. So that's what's drawing this little yellow square. Um, and again, it only does it for the currently active player. If I try to do it over here, since it's not Black's turn, it won't actually draw it. Um, but just to give the player some feedback. Um, so that runs every frame. But then when you actually click something and another event gets called, so if we come back here to the event graph again, and we look at the, sorry, the input graph rather, and we look at input action select, you can see I have the same type of logic set up here where you know it's basically saying, hey, is it my turn? And if it is, then we do this handle selection. And this runs a bunch of code that's pretty specific to chess to figure out, hey, you know, what piece are you selecting? Um, is it a valid piece that you are selecting? And if it is, then it checks, okay, where are you trying to move that piece to? Is that a valid move? And it does all of that logic checking inside of here. So if you wanted to add in checking, or if you wanted to add in like checkmate and stuff like that, you would add it inside of this function as well. But ultimately, at the end of this function, it calls um, two things. It's it asks it figures out if it can perform the move, but that's not networked. That's just local. And then it calls this networked perform move, and you can see it's a server event. Um, and so what it's saying is it's telling the server, hey, I, uh, this move is valid. 
uh, I've calculated that this move is valid, please go ahead and actually apply this move. Because the server is the one who should actually be moving the pawns or the bishops or the rooks or the pieces on the board around. If the client moves it, then it's only going to move on the client side and the server won't even know about it. But if the server moves it, um, it gets replicated to the client and so he sees it as well. So he actually tells the server to move the piece and then he sees that the server moves the pieces and that's what keeps it in sync. So he tells the server where to move and then finally he calls in turn. So if we go ahead and look at in turn, um, it's just a little event out here that calls the game state in player turn, which tells the server again, hey, please, um, please end my turn. So if we go ahead and look at this. We, the, uh, in the game state, it's checking the current player index. And if it's zero, then it sets it to one. And if it's one, then it sets it to zero. So basically whenever it gets the in turn event, it just flip flops the current player around and then it calls begin player on that new player. And so that's what allows it to go from one player to the other. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the gist of the project. There's again, there's a lot of code in here that's specific to chess. Um, so if you want to look at that, feel free. If you have any questions, uh, my Discord will be in the description as well. But I just wanted to share this project with you guys. Again, I was going to make a tutorial, but it would take way too long. I actually tried to do it, and I just kept like it was just too much. There's just too much in here to make a tutorial series out of it. So I just wanted to kind of explain it to you guys as best you can, and then I just decided to give you guys the source code instead. So. Um, Hopefully you guys uh, can appreciate that. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please, please leave a like and subscribe and feel free to message me again if you have any questions about it and I'll be happy to answer them or leave a comment. Thanks.